ourselves and introducing our team. As uh, Caitlin mentioned, we're going to talk to you guys about muscles and um, a little bit about uh, Caitlin. And um, we'll talk about our team and how we, um, how we uh, discover new medicines um, for uh, looking at muscle illnesses. So first I want to introduce our team of folks. We have basic scientists on our team. Those folks are what they're people who understand what makes a muscle sick. Um, and then our scientists look at how they can correct um, the muscle problem. And then we have translational scientists. Those are folks that um, try to understand what medicines will work in patients. Um, we have medical doctors who uh, have a deep understanding of the patients um, and they uh, understand how to test new medicines. Um, and then we have uh, program managers, folks who um, work on uh, making sure everyone is organized and working together as a team. So this is me. I'm uh, the program manager for, uh, for the team. I uh, work to keep everyone organized and working uh, efficiently. Um, I bring the team together, take all the information from all folks on the team and put it together into a plan and then make sure that we're all walking in the same direction. It's kind of like taking a puzzle and taking the pieces and putting it all together. Um, and then I'm gonna pass it off to Good morning, everybody. My name is Natalie. Um, I'm a basic scientist at Pepra, and so part of my job is that I work in the lab every day. I do experiments on muscle cells and other types of cells, and one thing that I think is really cool about my job is that I get to work with robots um, to do these experiments. So I operate and I train the robots, so if you guys think that's cool, I'll tell you a little bit more about it later on. Hello everyone, <clears throat> my name is Anthony, I'm a scientist, uh, I'm a muscle biologist, so what that means is um, as, a, as a scientist we all have little areas that we like to focus on. Uh, I study muscles, so uh, when you're picking things up, putting things down, you're moving around and you're walking, um, basically my job is to understand how your muscles work and how, um, how we can, can take what happens in a body and how we can study it in, in a really small petri dish and understand from that little little tiny muscle cell um, how that how that equates to what happens in your body. And we use things like electricity and really fancy colors to understand how muscles work, um, understand what happens when they go wrong, and then understand how we can fix them so we can try to build new medicines. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Mellian and I'm a doctor. Um, I'm a kind of doctor that's called a neurologist. And as a neurologist, uh, we treat people that have problems with their nerves. Does everybody know what their nerves are? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and their nerves with their nerves and their muscles. And so I help people that have problems with their muscles as well. So, and my job on the team is to help the team understand uh, what issues that people can have with their muscles. And then I also do experiments, not in the lab, but on people. So I help the team do these experiments on people so that we can try and help develop medicines to help people that have problems with their muscles or with their nerves. All right, and I'm Alejandro. I'm uh, uh, also a scientist. Uh, I also work in the lab, but I study different things. Um, I study how um, um, uh, DNA works in cells. So who here knows what DNA is? Okay, can you tell me what DNA is? DNA is like these little things inside you, and it's, and it's DNA for the Oh wow, you know the, can you say that again? Wow, <laughs> awesome. What can you tell me about it? Yes, so that's what we study in the lab, and as a team, we all work on trying to understand how also DNA can make us sick. Uh, we work as a team to uh, develop new medicines to fix those things in DNA, and uh, we plan on how to test those things now in people. 
So let's go back to DNA. So every living thing has DNA, right, in their cells. Um, do you guys know that uh, how long DNA is? Yes. Who say yes? Okay. You. Yeah, so there is, in every little tiny cell in your body, there is about two meters of DNA, which is like this big, right? So you have so many, so many uh, cells in your body that now if you put all of them together, you can go as far as the sun with, those, with that DNA. It's that long. You want to tell me something? So the DNA, isn't it like inside the cell? Yeah, so it's inside, this, it's inside the cell membrane. So you can see it in that little picture there. Right, um, where you have DNA that forms chromosomes and that goes inside of the nucleus of one cell that is in your body. And you have billions of cells. So, um, how does actually DNA make a signal? So DNA uh, encodes for uh, uh, information, right? It contains all the information that makes us uh, be the way that we are. So, um, it, we, our DNA is very, very similar to each other. 99.9% um, .9 of the DNA information uh, is exactly the same with all of us. So that means that out of a thousand pieces of DNA, only one is different. So we are pretty much the same, but just look a little bit different because of those little differences in our DNA. Yes? Sorry? So the, the ADN, what you saw before, ADN is in Spanish. Does somebody know what ADN means in Spanish? Wait, I forgot. Yes, right? And it's acido de oxido Yes. I am from Chile, you know. So Chile is a country that is very, very south in South America. Do you guys know something about Chile? Colombia, it's not too far. What about you? Yes, we have a huge desert and it's a very, very long country. So I'm from very far and that's why I know Spanish and I know English. And I can actually do science in both languages. So, which is it's kind of cool, right? Um, so let's go back to DNA. So whenever uh, we have differences in our DNA, um, those differences can make us a little bit different, right? but sometimes can make us sick when the wrong pieces are in the wrong uh, order. So, um, DNA, it's, it's information, yeah, makes proteins, right? So, proteins are really the machinery that uh, forms cells and actually makes cells do different functions. So, when the DNA uh, has problems, can make too much of a protein, and then it's very hard for the body to adjust to it. Or it can make too little of something, and then it's also hard to make a function when you're missing a piece, right? So if you take a piece of a computer, um, that computer is probably not work, gonna work as well as uh, it did before. So what do we do? We start to fix that um, by making your body uh, make less protein when it's making too much protein, or uh, making more protein when it's making too little. Sure. So, who can tell me what our muscles do? Who can tell me? Uh, it helps the body move around. Yeah, it helps the body move around. Um, it helps to, like, it helps to, like, um, I'm sorry. I, that's okay. That's okay. What else? Uh, Sometimes muscles can make you look strong. Also, they can also help um, you lift up stuff, like something very heavy. That's right. Something. That's right. Um, muscles can make you make you do everything everything that you can do. That's like right. Some, like some of the people are are twisting their heads a little to look at. Me. Exactly. So I think that all of you know that muscles help us move our bones, which is very important in doing all of those things that you guys talked about. Lift up heavy things, they can make us 
be much stronger depending on how big your muscles are. So, and they can help us stand up in full positions, but they also help hold our guts in place. Because if we didn't have our muscles, where would our guts be? On the floor, right? That wouldn't be good. If our muscles weren't there, then you know we'd have to be like picking up our stuff all the time, or we wouldn't be able to do that because we wouldn't have muscles. So muscles serve a very important function. And they also help to regulate our body temperature. So they help keep us warm, or sometimes they can help cool us off. And also, they store energy for us for support. Yes? Um, so, yep, they're part of the reason I, yeah, I, why we sweat, but that's a complicated process, but they're part of that. But they also can help to store energy as well. So when we get tired, sometimes we break down that energy in the muscle. So sometimes when you guys are like feeling kind of wonky and like, you know, like, you're like I'm just kind of tired and you get up and you jump around a little bit, how do you feel after sometimes you jump around and run around a little bit? Do you feel a little bit better? Yeah. <laughs> Right, exactly, exactly. So muscles help us do all of this stuff. And can anybody name any diseases that, that could potentially affect muscles? Yep, so, yep, so, um, and can any of you, yep, sorry? Right? But what happens if your muscles get, are, are sick? What happens, what do you think happens when your muscles, if your muscles are sick? They pretty much get weak because one time I um, was sick and I threw up a lot and I, and I couldn't run or jump. Right, so yeah, because you didn't have a lot of energy and the muscles didn't have a lot of energy and you can feel weak. What happens when the muscles themselves are sick? You can't move really because like, you can't, like, you can't reach for your own food or something like, you're like too tired to get your own stuff. Right. Like that happened to me once, like I got really sick. Uh -huh. Today I had to stay up from school. Right, exactly. So sometimes viruses that what you guys are talking about can certainly affect our muscles and how we feel. And so you feel weak, you feel like you can't walk. Um, sometimes you feel like, and you said something um, very important, sometimes you feel cold um, related to that. So it's really important, you know, that when, you have, when you're sick and your muscles are sick to realize this, but if your muscles are sick all the time, you guys know what it feels like to be sick some of the time, but sometimes muscles can be sick all of the time. And as a result, you can feel weak. And so you can have trouble, like you guys were talking about, trouble moving your arms and legs. And, and also, um, as I said before, muscles help us with energy. So if you don't have good muscle use, it can make you feel tired or look or feel tired. And like if the muscles in your face, so sometimes like when you guys are sick and you're feeling kind of like bled and you're not feeling, you're, you're kind of feeling, you're, you're, not, you're not very happy, but sometimes the muscles, in, it can affect the muscles in your face so you may not be able to, to smile. And somebody else around here said that can, you can have difficulty eating um, or even breathing. And then who here when they're sick and have had a virus have felt muscle pain? Like, you know, like you just feel like everything hurts. You feel like you're like 100 years old. Right, exactly. So sometimes when people, when, so we all have experienced some sickness in our muscles, but sometimes people, um, as you said over there, with certain muscle diseases, such as muscular dystrophy or myopathy, can have difficulty, have, di have this difficulty all of the time. They don't recover like you or I because they have a problem possibly with their DNA or something else related to the muscle. And so one of the things that um, this gentleman over here had mentioned was muscular dystrophy or Duchenne muscular dystrophy, um, which is one of the things that we use to refer to people that have or that have a problem with their muscles. It's usually inherited um, from their mom or their dad, and it, and it can make it difficult for them to use their muscles. As well as a disease called, this is a very big one here, uh, called fascio-scapulohumeral muscular dystrophy, or what we call FSHD. And sometimes with people, like, so you guys might know somebody who has Duchenne muscular dystrophy, but FSHD is not as common as Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, you might see people that have problems with moving their arms and their legs, they might be in wheelchairs, but in patients with FSHD, sometimes they have problems moving their arms and their legs, but they also have difficulty with their facial muscles as well. You know, so might, they might have eat differently 
or maybe not able to smile um, or when they're looking at you, and so it can affect their muscles. So muscle diseases, um, you can also have difficulty getting up from the floor. Uh, you can have, and people might not, because their muscles are weak, they might have difficulty um, walking or having a normal uh, type of a posture, which is called lordosis. So they might lean forward a little bit. Yes? Uh huh. They're very stretchy. No, they can't. Uh huh. I can't stretch. Uh huh. But like my friends can. Yeah, your friends can. But it's like my parents can't stretch. Yeah, sometimes that is inherited as well. Like you know, being able to stretch your muscles and being able, just like being a good runner or getting blue eyes or brown eyes, that's all inherited. That is true. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, can anybody tell me, um, so how can we tell if a new medicine will make our muscles better? What do you guys think? How can we tell? What can we do to see if a new medicine might make people with muscle diseases better? You in the back. Test it. Exactly. So, I think Anthony or Tell you what we do to see if new medicines can make your muscles feel better. All right. So first, we have a review. Let's see if everybody can remember. What What did we say is the purpose of our muscles? What do muscles do? Yes, in the back. Yes. Yeah, they help us move. They help us pick up things. But what exactly do they move? When our muscles move, what inside us is moving? There. Our bones. Our bones, exactly. Our, our, our muscles move our bones. That used to be a very funny video of a skeleton doing this. <laughs> yeah, I just showed you. <laughs> Can you guys all do that? In your seats. All of your muscles are moving. that muscles move our bones, but how does it do that? What happens when, when I tell, when I think really hard and I do this? What happens in the back, in the yellow? Yes? Yeah, exactly. Your brain sends a message, right? Yes. It's really fast, right? I don't have to think here for 45 minutes and then slowly my arm goes up and then I'm stuck and then I think really hard and it goes back down, right? We can do things really fast. What are some of the things that we can do really fast? Yes. We can snap. What else is fast? Running is fast. What else is really fast? Your arm is fast. Yeah, we go like this, it's really fast, right? So our brain works really, really fast. All in the span of the time for you to snap your fingers, your brain had the idea, it sends an electrical message all the way down your arm into your hand, tells your fingers to move, and then it sends messages all the way back to tell you that it did it right, and then you know how to do it. So what happens if we want to, to study how this works? Question?
It can send multiple messages, and it sends them all at the same time. And it can tell you whether you want to do things really fast, or you want to do things really slow. And depending on how many messages it sends, that will tell your muscles how fast or how slow or how hard they want to move. That's very important. So what happens when we want to study muscles, right? We want to learn how muscles work. Do you think we can just take that arm off and we can study other people's arms? Does anybody want to give me their arm to take back to the lab and study? All you guys want to give me that? No. What do you think? How do we study? How do we learn how muscles work? Yep, right here. That's, that's, that's exactly right. Did every, so one, one thing that we can do is we can study in mice. And a lot of the things that we do to study muscle are in mice or in dogs or in rabbits. But are mice and rabbits and dogs humans? No. no. So if we want to study human muscles, we have to study human muscles. How do we get human muscle? From the dead people, that, that definitely happens sometimes. We can, we can get some cells from, from dead people. One more. How about all the way in the back? Yes, you. That's, 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 that's right. So one thing that we can do is we can take a little piece of muscle from someone. We can take a needle. We can go in and take a little piece, just a little pinch, just like, you, you know, when you go and get a shot and they say just a little pinch and it goes and it pinches and then it's all done. So we can do that with a needle and we can take a little, little piece of muscle out. And what we can do is we have cells in there called stem cells. Have you guys heard of stem cells? Yeah. No. Okay. So stem cells, so we have some yes, some no. What is a stem cell? Somebody who knows. Yep, here. That's exactly right. That might as well have been in a textbook. That's exactly what stem cells are. So we get stem cells out of our muscle that are called muscle stem cells. And we take them out, and we put them in a very, very little dish. And what we can do with them is if you look at the picture in the middle, our muscles are made of, of big muscles. If you start to look inside, we have little cells inside called muscle cells. We call those myofibers. Inside the myofibers is a whole, whole, whole bunch of protein. And inside there, we have little cells that make, up, um, that make those up. So we take them out, we put them in a Petri dish, and what do you think muscle does when we take it out of the body and we put it in a petri dish? Yes? <coughs> yes, exactly. And if we were to, to use one of those things and, and use a microscope and we looked at the cells, what do you think we would see under there? Yeah, very good. But one thing, right? We said that muscles are supposed to move. Do you think that if we take a muscle out of the body, it would still move? No. No, we don't think so? No. You want to make a bet? No. No? Yeah, you want to make a bet? So why don't we look on the right, on the bottom? So 
what we can do is we can take muscle, we can take it out of the body, and we can make little, tiny, little muscle tissues in a dish. And what we can do is we can learn how that muscle behaves, and if there's something wrong with it, we can learn what causes that. And if we can understand what causes things to go wrong, we can understand how we can start to fix that. And we can understand if that muscle in the picture isn't working very well, we can start to understand how we can make it better, and then bring that from all the way from a cell that came from a human, all the way back into a human. Do you have a question? Yeah. Oh, these black things is a great is a great segue into Natalie's thought. Plastic. 
it's really, really different, and sometimes it can be hard for them to grow. So putting them in a dish like this, and then we give them different nutrients that they like to grow, and then we put them in an incubator at a temperature which is similar to the human body temperature, um, makes them happier and it makes them grow better. So we got to meet a bunch of uh, my friends who uh, work on um, what their role is in looking for new medicines. There are also many other people on the team who are involved in working on new medicines um, who weren't able to join us today. We have the people who actually make the drug, the pill or whatever um, the drug the delivery type is. We have medicians and computer scientists and many other folks who are on the team. So a lot of people go into um, making a medicine for us to look at in people. Yes, question you back? So thank you all um, for your attention. Um, we are we're very we are very happy to answer any other questions. Um, if you have other questions, please feel free uh, to, to contact us. We can give the school our contact information. And um, you know, you guys were a great audience, and we really appreciate it. So have a great day, everybody.